Hi everybody, Josiah here, also known as Chilling Silence, and we're going to start with the DigiStats website today. So, I mentioned in my tweet here that the data circuit that it was on, that the monitoring of the blockchain and the data extraction was taking place from, was undergoing a little bit of maintenance. That's now back up, so you'll note that there is a couple of little blips there, and you can see one and two there where it briefly went down. The number of connections that my particular node has were increasing, increasing, and then it dropped down. But anyway, uh, that maintenance has all completed. All of the statistics are still accurate and things. There's just that little bit of time that is missing, effectively. Nothing to worry about, but I encourage you to go along and check it out. I love just leaving it open and, and just, just watching it. I think it's just cool. Um, that's digistats.digibyteservers.io if you are curious to have a nosy yourself. All of the Digibyte statistics there. Well, not all of them, but a lot of them, anyway. The DigiHash website, uh, which is a mining pool, is going to be closing down after seven years. Now, this was predominantly run by Jared Tate, and what would happen is whenever a new version of the core wallet is about to be released, we would fire it up there, make sure it can mine a block or two, and that everything is fine and happy, and then it would be released to the broader public. Now, it does take a little bit of uh, maintenance, I suppose, for DigiHash, and as such, Jared has decided to shut it down. Kind of unfortunate, but at the same time, uh, he makes a very good point in that back in the day, there were only a very, very small handful of mining pools, and there are literally... I don't think there's quite a hundred yet, but it's very close to a to hundred. I think we're around about, like... 70 80 mining pools there's a lot of mining pools out there anyway and even more individual miners that themselves are not operating public pools which is super cool to see absolutely fantastic kind of sad to see it shutting down but at the same time there was also a lot of digibyte support requests people would come into the mining channel and say hey look i've been mining for a couple of days i haven't received a payout where is it what's going on and a lot of people didn't quite realize that it would only automatically pay out after a hundred digibyte had been accrued so they would just start mining, start mining, and for their particular, I mean, it could have taken them like three or four days, it could have taken them a week, we don't know, but we would get a lot of support requests, and combined with the 5% fee, it was relatively high, and so on the one hand, it's sad to see it go, on the other hand, it's going to be great because we don't have to deal with those support requests anymore, so yay. But I think what really, really matters most about this is that it is a testament to how much the ecosystem has grown overall, and that's really quite cool. Not just in mining pools, I mean sure, we're, we're absolutely seeing a lot more mining pools, there are so many more now, it's fantastic. But the entire ecosystem over the last seven years has grown significantly, and it's now at the point where... Jared doesn't actually need to run that particular mining pool, and I think that's a really cool place for us to be at overall. So, excited about that, really curious to see what the future holds for mining with Digibyte. Uh, and anyway, back to what we've been doing in terms of the overarching processes around implementing things into Digibyte. We want it to be more open, more public, uh, we want to have better historical records, we want more contributions from people, and we want that history to be there, which is really quite important. So it's really cool because we can see here, so this is the one that I was talking about the other day, this is the first one, uh, the very first blockchain tests, and so Barry had submitted it. We've already got feedback here from GTO90. Uh, now he's the gentleman who originally started the new Android and iOS mobile wallets, uh, and so we've got feedback and things, and we've got discussion around it happening, and this is the kind of thing that I'm looking forward to seeing more of. So, uh, from the looks of it, uh, Barry's gone through and he's specifically talked about uh, the first of the unit tests for the Digibyte blockchain, which is cool, super excited to see those done. Uh, we've also got a couple of other ones here, so one of the readmes has been updated, but the really cool part here is that GTO90 himself is also following this particular process. So he's come here and he's made this pull request to get it reviewed by other people. It's not just one person going off and doing their own thing, or one person specifically controlling development, or contributing things without anybody else checking it. So that's really quite important for the longevity of the Digibyte blockchain. We've also got here um, a trivial deletion of a particular file, which we inherited from freaking ages ago. Uh, we've also updated the contribution document. 
which tells people how you can contribute to the Digibyte blockchain. Now, this is really quite cool because I'll show you this over here. What we have is the reviewers. So we can see here Digi Contributor has given it a tick. Smart Array, which is Yoshi, has not yet. And the Digibyte account, which is Jared, also has not yet. So we need, because GTO90 is the person submitting it, we still need two other people to specifically review it and potentially more as well. But so we can see here his one, because he is the one who would otherwise be reviewing it, his contribution doesn't specifically count as being reviewed, which is cool. And I think that's quite important too. Now he's requested review from people. Um, I've come down here and I've said acknowledge, which basically means that I've read through it all and it looks good to me. Uh, we've come down here and uh, J50NG has said CAC, which means concept acknowledge, which means that the overarching summary here is something that he agrees with and thinks is going to be a good idea, but he hasn't specifically read through every single individual line in there. And then we come down here and Digi Contributor says, uh, concept and knowledge can't stop the slow march of progress. Cheers, everyone involved in getting us here. So that's really cool to see. Um, so then what we'll see down here is these are the changes and this is how things are going to work in the future. And so I know I'm potentially repeating myself a little bit based on what we had a couple of days ago, but this is still really important for people to understand the process and why we're doing this now. And so you can see down here, Digi Contributor has approved it. We're still pending two other people to go through and review it before those changes get committed into Digibyte Core for the next release. Now, this is not going to affect the current release. It's only going to be the next one. So that's something to also keep in mind. But as part of this, we're also going to go through and we're going to look at reviewing the likes of ProgPow and RandomX and some of these other performance contributions and things. So it's really, really exciting to see. Anyway, that's going to be all from me for today. I hope you've enjoyed this. Consider leaving a like, subscribe, hit the share button. You can reach out to me in the comment section below. You can hit me up on Twitter. I'm at DGP underscore chilling. Otherwise, I'll talk to you in the next video, and we'll see you soon. Cheers.